We Our were West End Live! Welcome to The Rock! And my name is Mark. I'm in the cast of Come From Away. And I just wanted to talk to you for a little minute today. Uh, if I've learned anything from the people in Gander, it's that to get anything done, you've got to work as a team. And if you've seen Come From Away, you will see 12 actors tell this remarkable true story every night. But we are not a team of 12 actors. We are a team of 20 actors, and we would like to take this moment to thank and celebrate our wonderful super standbys here at Come From Away. Now, I'm sure some people here don't actually know what a standby is, and I don't care what you heard. They don't just sit upstairs with their feet up and a face mask on, watching Stranger Things on their laptop. No, they are literally standing by, ready to go on at a moment's notice. But what makes our standby so special in Come From Away is they don't cover one, they don't cover two, they don't cover three, they all cover five parts each. And if you've seen our show, you'll know that's a lot of lines, that's a lot of harmonies, and that's a lot of moving chairs. When I was cast in Come From Away, I was lucky enough to be cast as a standby. And I can tell you, it is the hardest gig I have ever had in my life. What these people have to go through, the amount of blood, sweat, and tears, and the endless rehearsals. And literally, they do it at the drop of a hat. So please, will you put your hands together for our super standbys, Matthew Wendell Clark, Ricardo Castro, Alex McMorrin, Stuart Hickey, Kiara Barante, Jennifer Tierney, Lucy Park, and Sarah Morrison. And to all of the standbys, to all of the swings, to all of the understudies, thank you for keeping our theaters alive and open. And without further ado, let me welcome to the stage my friend and super standby, Miss Jennifer Tierney and the cast have come from away. My parents must have thought they had a crazy kid. Cause I was one of those kids who always knew what I wanted. They took me down to the airport to see all the planes depart and watching them fly. Something inside of me was started. I was eight when I told them that I'd be a pilot. But I was too young and too short and there were no female captains and my dad said be patient he said just see what happens but I took my first lesson came down from the sky told my father I'd fly for the rest of my life and I got my first job flying for a mortician in a tiny bonanza just a corpse and me five dollars an hour for flying dead bodies I'd have to climb over their faces just to get to my seat Suddenly the wheels left off the ground is falling backwards I am suddenly alive Suddenly I'm in the cockpit Suddenly everything's changed Suddenly I'm not too young or too short and The passengers in the back don't complain Suddenly I'm Company charter, suddenly everything's high. Suddenly there's nothing in between me and the sky. American Airlines had the prettiest planes. So I applied as a flight engineer. But the World War II pilots, they all complain. They said girls shouldn't be in the cockpit. Hey, lady, hey, baby, hey, why don't you grab us a drink? And the flight attendants weren't my friends back then. And they said, are you better than us, do you think? But I kept getting hired. And the World War II crew, they retired. And the girls all thought much higher of me. 
1986, the first female American captain in history. Suddenly I'm in the cockpit. Suddenly I've got my way. On the northeast tip of North America, on an island called Newfoundland, there's an airport that used to be one of the biggest airports in the world. And next to it is a town called Gander. Everybody knows everybody else. And everybody in this room has a story about how they started that day. Welcome to the Rock, if you come from away. You probably understand about a half of what we say. They say no man's an island, but an island makes a man. Especially when one comes from a man. Welcome to the Rock! So that morning, I'm in the classroom. It's our first day back, and the school buses are on strike, so I'm covering for Annette, who's running late. Sorry, Beulah. How's the kids? Well, not exactly thrilled to be inside on such a gorgeous day. So I told them it'd only be a half day this morning, and they were quite pleased. Till I told them we'd have the other half in the afternoon. Welcome to the wildest weather that you've ever heard of. One is nicer, but it's never nice above. Welcome to the finest place you'll get from Disneyland. Fish and chips and shipwrecks. This is Newfoundland. Welcome to the rock. in my car. The kids cross Airport Boulevard to get to school and at that time of day people are in a bit of a rush to get to work and stuff so normally I sit there and I run my radar. <laughs> and if they're speeding I'll stop them and I'll write out a warning ticket. I'll write STFD. Welcome to the land where no winter tried to kill us and we said we will not be killed. Welcome to the land where the water's trying to drown us and we said we will not Welcome to the land where we lost our loved ones and we said We will still go on Welcome to the land where the wind tried to blow And we said no That morning I drop my kids off at school and head to the SPCA Where I'm greeted by my other kids All barking and meowing for breakfast and a belly rub Not that I'm complaining, I love them But by the time feeding's done I gotta get back to pick up my human kids so I take just one second for myself, and I'm sitting in my car. I'm in the staff room. I'm in the library. And, and I, I turn, turn on, on the radio. 
I'm running my radar. When Bonnie comes by, she pulls up. She is waving at me like mad. So I roll down my window and she's in. Pause, turn on your Slow radio. Slow it down, Pause, Bonnie. turn on your radio. You are here.